The Mutual Broadcasting System presents The Family Theater, starring Pat O'Brien and Bill Williams. Edward G. Robinson is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Edward G. Robinson. Thanks for inviting us into your home this evening. And it's nice to know that so many of you are listening with your families. Your letters tell us that, and we're pleased because it means that you like our program and the purpose behind it. As most of you know, family theater is dedicated to your family, and dedicated with the hope that your family is well and happy, and that your home is all you wish it to be. We join with so many of you in the conviction that a family that prays together stays together. For if we have understanding and harmony within our own homes, we will also have a broader and a brighter viewpoint of our neighbor's problems and those of the world at large. Well, enough about our purpose and more about tonight's play, which is based on an original story by Matt Taylor and adapted for the family theater by True Boardman and features two of our most popular and well-known stars, Bill Williams and Pat O'Brien. So stand by for work of a lifetime. The somber mass of stone and steel that is a state penitentiary in row upon row of cell blocks, silent, sallow men sit waiting through the eternity that is the time they are to serve. And on a certain winter's day, in the office of the warden, in the prison administration building... Why shouldn't a man get out of this place when he gets a chance? He should. Of course he should. Warden, you ought to see the place I'm going. As pretty a little valley as God ever made. And I'll have my own house and a garden and a housekeeper. Twenty-seven years. Yes, men have come here with a death rap and served less time than that. Well, if you're looking for an argument from me, you, you're out of luck. If I'd been in your place, I'd have tried to get out long ago. Uh, but you will remember about young Jensen. He's due for another examination next month. That cough of his sounds pretty bad. Oh, and that... Machine in the jute mill where the guardrail is broken. Oh, uh, look, Father Darcy, I've let you practically run this penitentiary for years because I had no choice. But once you walk through that door, I'm running things. Don't worry, Father, I'll see about Jensen. Yes? Warden? What is it, Keller? It's Morgan, sir, in the hospital. He's pretty bad, and he says he wants to see Father Darcy. Oh, well, you better look up the new chaplain, Keller. Officially, Father Darcy's transferred to... Oh, Nonsense. The lad sent for me, didn't he? Of course I'll see him. Uh, but, Father... Warden, I don't get it. I didn't know Morgan was of Father Darcy's faith. You ought to know by now that never made any difference in here. Well, it's nearly three. You better call assembly. You know, Warden, this place is going to seem different somehow with Father Darcy gone. You think that's news to me? Well, what are you standing there for? Assemble the men. Then go after the father and tell him they're waiting. <laughs> Warden, Keller said something about an assembly. Yes, yes, that's right. Uh, how about Morgan? He's gone. I'm grateful I was still there to be with him. Well, the men are waiting, all of them. Uh, we'll go right in. I tell you, I know what I'm talking about. I tell you, I see. Say, what is this? Never mind. <clears throat> 
Men, Father Darcy is leaving this afternoon. And while I know he said goodbye to many of you individually, I felt sure he'd like to say a word to all of you at once. All right, Father. Well, I, I don't know what the warden's talking about. Why I should want to say goodbye to a bunch of hoodlums like you, I don't know. You're a fine lot of specimens. After all my training, you still can't play a decent game of baseball the way you played last Saturday. Why, the, the women's prison could beat you. You, Mike Kolnick, unless your game improves, you'd better stop blowing off about coming from Brooklyn. Now, uh, look at you all. The worst-looking lot of two-time losers I ever saw. I'll be glad to be rid of you. But as bad as you are, if you're ever out walking some afternoon and you happen to stroll down Pearl Valley Way, stop in. And I'll make an effort to put up with you. Well, what I'm trying to say is when you do get out, you'll be welcome. Any and all of you. Yes, even you, Jack Marson, who slept through Mass for the last three Sundays. Huh. You thought I didn't know about that, didn't you? Well, that's all, men. Except that being an old fool by nature, I probably missed a lot of you. So long. And for those of you who want it, you have my blessing. What are you getting up for? Now sit down, all of them. Okay, slug. Now's the time. What is this? Uh. <clears throat> Father, uh, this here is something a bunch of the boys got together and fixed for you. It's, um, it's an altar cloth for your new church. <laughs> it's kind of crooked on one end, but that's on account of Killer O'Meara never counts his stitches right. We, uh, we all thank you for what you've done here, and we hope you're going to like it down in Pearl Valley. So long, Father. And good luck. Okay, you guys, come on, give up with the singing. Rock of ages, clap for me. Let me hide myself in the deep. Let the You can see those windows lead out onto the garden. That's really the finest view in all Pearl Valley in the springtime. Oh, I can see it would be, Father Thomas. I hope everything is arranged to your liking, Father Darcy. Everything is fine. But I may need some time to get on to things. This is my first parish, you know. You were up at the prison a long time, then. A couple of thousand lifetimes, son. Uh, you uh, sort of watch me shop for a while, will you? Uh, what I say, I mean, I, I don't think the good parishioners of Pearl Valley would appreciate stir talk or um, prison language in, in the sermons. <laughs> I'll watch it. Uh, and now, uh, if you'd like to see the kitchen. Oh, the most important room in the house. <laughs> don't let Mrs. Wilkins startle you. She talks a good deal, but she's also the best cook in the valley. Oh, Father Thomas, I... Oh, my goodness. Uh, Mrs. Wilkins... This is Father Darcy. How do you do, Mrs. Wilkins? Oh, you'll have to forgive me. I'd at least have had my apron off if I'd have known. This kitchen is just a mess. How do you do, Father? We're that glad to have you. And you're glad to be here, I dare say, after all that time with those cutthroats and all. Oh, and this is little Jimmy Mason. He just brought over a jar of jam for you from his mother. Uh, say how to do to Father Darcy, Jimmy. Hello, Father Darcy. Jimmy's father is president of the bank here, and his mother... Well, pardon me, Mrs. Wilkins. Jimmy, I'm glad to see you, son. Would you like to shake hands? I guess so. Ah, thank you. I'll be looking for you in church on Sunday. I'll be there. Father? Yes, son? Were you really up there in the big house? Yes, Jimmy, for a long time. 
Gee, did you ever see anybody ride old Smokey? You know, get burned? Jimmy! For goodness sake! Uh, father, the child should be punished. Now, now, but... now, Mrs. Wilkins, please. Yes, Jimmy, I saw a good many men go to the electric chair. And it wasn't... Uh, we'll talk about that some other time. Suppose you run on home now. Oh, and thank your mother for the jelly. It was jam. For the jam. Yes, Father. Goodbye. Oh, uh, wait, Jimmy. I'll walk down with you. Goodbye, Jimmy. Bye, Father Darcy. Well, I never, Father. I, I just don't know what to say about that child. Of course, you may be sure that none of the rest of us will ever mention you having been up in that awful place. And why shouldn't you mention it? After all, I was the chaplain and not an inmate, you know. Well, Father Darcy, I... Oh, good heavens, there's someone out back to see you. He said he wouldn't leave until you got here. Well, who is it, Mrs. Wilkins? Out here, you say. Liv! <laughs> Hi, dear Father Darcy. Well, come in here. I'm glad to see you, boy. Yes, uh, I sure feel proud to see you, sir. You know, I was beginning to think that you wasn't coming. Mrs. Wilkins, this is Leavenworth Johnson. Howdy, ma'am. Pleased to meet you. Mrs. Wilkins, Leavenworth and I are very old and very good friends. We were uh, associates for some time. Associates? How long was it exactly, Lev? Well, uh, eight years and three months, Father. You helped me get almost two years off for good behavior, you remember? Well, you helped yourself, son, and I was proud of you. Go on in my study there, boy. I'll be right in. I want to talk to you. Yes, sir, Father, and me likewise. Uh, Mrs. Wilkins... Count on one more for dinner. Leavenworth will be staying. Father, that man? Why, he looks like a cutthroat. <laughs> I'll tell you a secret, Mrs. Wilkins. He is. That's what he served eight years for. <laughs> oh, Father Darcy! <laughs> oh, Lev, you scoundrel. What are you doing in Pearl Valley? Well, the day I got out up there, I done tell you that if you ever went away from that place, no matter where it was, you could always count on me to come and tend for you. Well, Whitey Jefferson done written me that you was coming here, and here I is to stay. Uh, Lev, I, I'm grateful to you for your offer, and more grateful than you know, but I... Uh, now, well, Father, I... if it's money that you is worried about, eating and sleeping, that's all I want. As far as you and me is concerned, after all you done done for me up there, the Emancipation Proclamation is hereby repealed. Uh, you's in a strange country hereabout, Father. You're gonna need me plenty, believe me. Lev, I am beginning to think you're right. <laughs> and the Thanksgiving Bazaar is customary, Father Darcy. Uh, of course, if you feel it's too much work and you'd rather not bother... Well... Bother nothing. Some work is what I'm looking for around here. And the ladies of the ladies' aid are here to see you, Father. It's about the parish Christmas party. Mm. Show the good ladies in. And find Father Thomas for me, so they'll have somebody who talks their language. Uh, that's on Thursday. And then Friday and Saturday, there are two christenings, uh, a marriage and the young people's dance. Oh, yes, and uh, two new altar boys are to be selected. Looks like a very strenuous week for you, I'm afraid, Father. Very strenuous. Lev, did you hear that? A strenuous week. Strenuous? <laughs> for my money, this is the nothing ever happenest place that ever was. All I do is sit and get fat. <laughs> it's like you're doing, Father. <laughs> you're right, Lev. The warden should see me now. This is exactly the life he said I needed. Yeah, dull, ain't it? Father Darcy, Father Darcy, oh, I knew it would happen, I knew it. What is it, Mrs. Wilkins, what's happened? I just heard the prison. There's been a prison break and the men who escaped are headed this way and we'll all be murdered in our beds. How many escaped and when? Where'd you hear about it's this? It's all over town. I wonder if Father Thomas knows we'll all be murdered in our beds. Father Thomas! A break, Lev. I wonder if it's true. Could be, even as Miss Wilkins do say so. I will soon find out. Hello. This is Father Darcy. Give me the Daily Inquirer, please. I think the number is uh, 412. Most of the breaks are tried this time of the year when... Uh, hello. Uh, hello, Mr. Payson. Father Darcy. I hear there's news of a break about the prison. How many? 
Only one. What's his name? Oh, oh yes. Yes, I, I know him. He, he's headed down this way. You're sure? Thanks, Mr. Payson. It's Vigo, Lev. Benny Vigo. Hey, that real mean guy in cell block five? The one that handled the knuckle interview to Hendrix that time and nearly put him away? That's Vigo. A crazy fool. He's only got a year to go. Now he takes a chance on going for the whole ride. Well, maybe they won't catch him. Uh, a farmer gave him a lift on the road just north of here. It's identified him completely. Prison guards and state troopers are already after the boy. They even sent for the hounds. Uh-oh, he is good as lock up right now. Lev, if you were in Benny's place, where would you go? Around here, I mean, to hide out. Well, gosh, Father, I don't exactly know. I reckon down by the freight yards. Well, that's, that's the first place they'd look. No, no, you'd be someplace near the tracks, so you could run for a freight train when it passed, someplace where there's lots of cover, trees and bushes. Well, there ain't no place like that around here, except in them woods back at the golf course. And what runs along the other side of the golf course? Well, there's nothing but the, hey, the train tracks. Leavenworth Johnson, you said a while ago that I was getting fat. Well, you're right. What I need is some exercise. Come on. Let's go out and have a good game of golf. That was a good drive I made back there, Lev, if I do say it myself. Over a hundred yards. Look, Father, I don't get it. Is you just expecting that Benny fella to walk right out on the golf course in plain sight and talk to you? Bad thing about this fifth hole, Lev. Fairway runs so close to the woods. A little slice and your ball is lost in the trees. Give me that brassy. Yes, sir. Hey, that ain't the right club for no shot like this. No, I think it is. Watch this. I told you the ball done went flat and right square into them trees. Stay here, Lev. Stay here and come quickly if I call you. Now, Father, you can't go in there alone. That fellow Vigo is dangerous, Father. Mighty careless way to hit a ball. Mighty careless. Wasn't it, Benny? Benny Vigo, it's you I'm talking to. I know you're in there. I saw you watching me when I made the last drive. They're combing the place for you, Benny. They've even sent for the hounds. There are cinch to search here soon. Come on, son. For the last time, I'll ask you. Come on out now, or I'll go about my business and let somebody else find you. The difference is I want to help you, Benny. All right, lad, if that's the way you want it. Wait. Wait a minute. Okay. Okay, so I'm here. What about it? Benny, I'm glad to see you, boy. What are you doing around here? Oh, this is my parish, Benny. I've been here ever since I left the prison. Didn't you know that? No. Benny, I want to talk Stay to you. Stay right where you are. I'll give you the heat. All right. Oh, I suppose you got that gun where you got those clothes. Pals on the outside had them stashed away waiting for you. Oh, you were always a smart lad. Never mind the yap, parson. You said you had something to say. Well, spill it. Where do you go from here, Benny? That's none of your business. I'll make it. Not if I turn you in, you won't. You ain't turning me in. You're pretty sure of that, aren't you? Oh, but then that cannon in your hand makes you sure of a lot of things. I can take care of myself. All right, spread out and cover the woods, sir. Hey, they're closing in. That's right, Benny. Get out of here, high collar, and quick. You're not taking me, see? Well, a swell chance you'll have, son, against a lot of them. I told you to stop talking and beat it. All right, Benny, but I won't go alone. Lev, Leavenworth. What is this? Yes, sir, Father, where is you? Here, Lev, here. Hey, you found him. Hi there, Vigo. Hey, now, look, don't point that thing at me. I, I'm just doing what I was told. Give Vigo that golf ball. Give yes. him that golf bag. Give yes, it to Father. What's the angle? What gets the golf bag? A man playing golf can have a caddy, can't he? All right. Keep that hat down over your eyes. Stick right beside me. I'll play the next hole. That'll bring us right here to where my car is parked. Once we're out of the club grounds, you get back and keep your face to the floor. Well, what about me, Father? You head off into the woods, Lev, and get going. Yes, sir, Father, I'm gone already, and whatever you're doing, good luck with it, Father, so long. So long, Lev. All right, Benny, we're off. And if you remember your prayers, lad, you'd better start saying them. If we're going to get away with this, we'll need help. Lots of it. Let's go. <laughs> Benny, you all 
right back there? I'm okay. How's about the cops? We passed most of them. Still keep low. Don't worry. Where are you taking me, Parson? You know a good hideout? The best in the world. Where is it? Your house? Better than that, son. Watch it. Stay low. They're stopping cars ahead. I'll try to drive on through. I think we made it. Oh, for a moment I was worried. Believe me, I never thought that we would ever... Yeah? Uh, we made it, huh? Uh, easy now. Easy, lad. Easy. Stay down! Hey, pull over there! Where do you think you're going anyway? Oh, hello, Officer Nelson. Something wrong? Oh, Father Darcy. Didn't recognize you. We're looking for that escaped convict. Say, I heard about him. Go right ahead, Father. Sorry I bothered you. Oh, no bother at all, Officer. again, Benny. I just tried one myself. I guess we're all clear now. You got what it takes, Parson. I'll give you that much. Thank you, son. But you still ain't said where you're taking me. I haven't, have I? Well, you have to know sometime. I'm taking you back to prison, Benny. You're taking me? You. You crossed me. Easy, son. I said I'd get you to where you'd be safe. And that means inside those walls. There's no place else. Stop this car. Pull into the first side road? No, Benny. I'm going on, and you're not stopping me. I'm not, huh? You feel that smart guy? Well, shooting me in the back is not the answer, Benny. Shut up! Shut up and stop this car! Maybe I did cross you, but I had to. You're a scared, mixed-up guy with a loaded gun in your hands. The first man who tried to take you, you'd shoot him, Benny. Maybe the second, too, but sooner or later, one of them would get you, and if you were alive, you'd still go back up there, son, and... Not in a car with me. Not like this with at least half a chance, but... Stop talking! I'm warning you! No, you wouldn't be going back. Maybe you only serve one more year and... and then be free. You'd be going for the finish, Benny. The quick and terrible finish I've tried to help so many men to meet. Stop it! Do you hear me? I said to stop you yakking and stop the car. Stop it! A year, Benny. A year. One last short year and you'll be free. Oh, oh I know you think it'd be a longer rap after you try to break, but there's something we can try. I can't promise it'll work. Believe me, son, I want to help you. I know what's in your heart. Oh, I know how you grew up. No family, no affection. No one who cared or understood. And that's always what's made you want to fight the world. Stop it! All right, Father. I'm counting three, see? And if you ain't stopped that car by then, I'm letting you have it. All right, Benny. I believe in you, lad. There is the makings of a fine man in you. One... You'll do what you have to do. No one can blame you, but it could be otherwise. You could finish your sentence and go on to a fine, useful life. Two? God bless you, Benny, and forgive you. Three! Well, Benny, I'm waiting. <laughs> oh, I can't. I can't give it to you. I can't. <laughs> oh, of course you can't, son. Here, give me that gun. It's a great gamble I took on you, lad. I I gambled that even though you were a rogue and a thief. It wasn't in you to shoot a man in the back, and I won, Benny. I won. Now stop your whimpering and listen to me. First, we've got to find the spot where you hid your prison clothes. Then if the brakes are still with us... Open the gate, Keller. Father Darcy, what are you doing up here? Oh, just a visit to the warden. I, I've got something in the back seat for him. Well, that's mighty thoughtful of you, Father. Go right in. Benny, can you hear me? Yeah. Where are we? Inside, just back of the laundry. The gong will sound off any minute. The men will be crowded in for supper. Fall right in line. You'll not be noticed. Get up in front. The screws will be in the rear. There it is, lad. You are a right guy, Forget father. Forget it, son. Run for it and good luck. Dear Lord, I'm most grateful for what you've done for Benny. And for me, too. If this be wrong in your eyes, let me be punished. 
but let things be easier for the boy. I place him completely in your hands from now on. Amen. Father, for the tenth time, I tell you, that man did make a break. He did. Can you prove it, Warren? Well, he was missing at last night's checkup. His cell wasn't slept Your in. man must be getting careless. Well, you know they're not careless. Besides, who ever heard of a man breaking into the penitentiary? Oh, that's a laugh. A laugh, is it? It's a strange coincidence that the one person who identified Vigo saw him near Pearl Valley, and tonight, just when Vigo reappears, I have a visitor from Pearl Valley. In his car. Oh, you're wrong, Warden. That's not my car. It belongs to the parish. Young Father Thomas will likely be driving it after I talk to the bishop. What do you mean? I understand your new chaplain doesn't like it here, so I've been thinking of coming back and taking his place. Are you crazy? You've got everything down there in Pearl Valley. That's right, everything but my real job. Everything but enough people who need the kind of help I know best how to give. While I think of it, oh, we've got to line up a good job for someone. Lev Johnson. Maybe that stockholder fellow who gets out next month and need a chauffeur. <laughs> or a golf caddy. A golf caddy? Lev Johnson? Father, are you sure you feel all right? You haven't been fasting too much. Nothing of the kind. I'm feeling wonderful, Warden. The beautiful bad air of this place is doing me good already. Oh, Father, be sensible. You've got a soft berth in Pearl Valley. Stick to it. You said yourself 27 years in this place was enough for any man. Well, I was wrong. It's not a matter of years, Warden. When there's a whole lifetime of work for a man to do, he can't possibly do it unless... This is Edward G. Robinson again, expressing thanks to Pat O'Brien and Bill Williams for two fine performances. You know, no matter who you are or where you may be, I'm sure you'll agree with me about one thing. Nothing in this whole wide world can bring us more happiness than a family. If your family life is a happy one, well, you're really sitting right smack on top of the world. But by the same token, if your family is falling apart instead of sticking together, if your family life is one argument after another, if your children get into one scrape after another... Well, then, let's not kid each other. You really know the meaning of the word misery. And I guess we've got to admit that these days that there are so many things that seem to be responsible for breaking up our homes, things that seem impossible to cope with. Our newspapers are filled with stories on juvenile delinquency, and possibly the main trouble is the example we as parents set for our children. Uh, what are your thoughts on the uh, subject, Pat O'Brien? You're a good family man. Well, Eddie, it's... Uh... Pretty big task to bring up children properly. As a matter of fact, the job is apt to be too tough for even the best of parents. However, we don't have to do it alone. We can get help, the most powerful help a man can ask for. But remember, we've got to ask for it. Ask and you shall receive. Yes, ask God for his help. Pray. Pray with your children that God will help your family. The very act of praying together will bring your family closer together. Remember, a family that prays together stays together. So pray together tonight and every night that your family may be together always. Good night. Thank you, Pat. And before saying good night, I want to express our thanks to all of you who have helped make this program possible. Thanks also to True Boardman for directing our play tonight and to our producer, Bob Longnecker. Next week, our stars on the Family Theater will be Lee Bowman, George Murphy, and Jimmy Gleason in an original story by Bud Lesser entitled A Bunch of Keys. Now, this is Edward G. Robinson saying good night to all. The series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.